So I've gotten design drawings from Jeannie. And the first thing I need to check is how the wrap, how the repeat works, how the wrap works. So that when it wraps around the cylinder, the flat drawing wraps around the cylinder, that it'll repeat right. There won't be collisions. There won't be pieces on top of other pieces. So I'm going to create a file in VCar if you can do it in Aspire as well. So I'm going to import her drawing. She gave it a couple formats. I'm going to use EPS. And I'm going to move this over and sort of out of the way so I can work with it. So she's put in little hash marks to show where she thinks the, the repeat works. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to group this so that when I'm dragging things around that I don't move things independently of others. It's just a, a safety thing. So now I'm going to take it, I'm going to take this whole gizmo, I'm going to drag, make a copy and drag it over and line these hash marks up. And I'm going to do the same in the other side. Now we're going to, now this is going to sort of be the whole thing wrapped around with some overlap on the two sides. I need to know, really this seams is where the two, where the two, where the seam will meet is the only thing that really matters. This extra stuff is, doesn't come into effect. But I immediately see there's a wonky spot here. A spot where there's an overlap. And I'm not sure that's what she intended. And there's a couple of options. One of them is just to move this over a little bit. To make some space there. But that creates some white space all along. I'm not convinced that she, that's really kind of what she intended in her design. Let's put it back the way it was. Another option, I'm going to ungroup this one. So that I can play with the individual parts. So may, another option is to take just this part, ooh, not that, but take this piece and see if she wants to modify this. Just kind of maybe rotate it around a little bit, um, make enough room for everything. That keeps from having too much thing. I mean, that's, my, that's my gut feeling is that's what she's going to want to do. The rest of it looks pretty good. I don't see any problems, but that just needs to be modified so that it's, you know, I can maybe draw a little bit of a, a guideline to sort of show where all this, where that seam is. And she can see that she kind of needs to pull it in somewhere around there. So maybe that, maybe that gets included in my screenshot. And then it goes back to her, and I say, what do you want to do? One of the things I've really learned is, is understanding how to describe some sort of fabrication-specific things that are important to me to someone who doesn't have that experience in fabrication. It's really kind of a, it's a communication issue. That made it a little bit challenging, but it turned out really well. I think the project is, um, it's an interesting project. Um, it, it turned into a box of cookies in the mail for me, which is definitely a value added. So there are a couple of things I learned about this. It's mostly just a standard indexer project. Yeah, you put a, put something in the, put a blank in there and spin it around and cut something. Um, but there were a couple of things I, I learned that weren't obvious to me in the beginning. And I started out by thinking that I would do it just with a pocket tool path. And that just seemed easy to do with pocket. I didn't need the sharp corners that a V-carved tool path would give me, so I figured a pocket would be the easy way to do it. But it turns out, and you know, once, once I thought about it, you know, it was pretty obvious, that in a pocket tool path, it's, it's kind of binary. You know, it can either cut it full depth or the bit can't fit in there. And in most things, that's fine, but this had a lot of small sections, little curved pieces that were wider than my engraving bit was at full depth. So it just wouldn't cut that. It would just skip places it couldn't fit into between little details. And what I ended up doing was using a V-carve toolpath with a flat depth. And I set the flat depth to where I had as deep as I wanted the piece, the, the pattern to cut. And it worked great. So it could just kind of partially go in until it was just the right width for those small features. And um, 
It took a little longer because it tried to, it did a lot of up and down and all that really kind of wasn't necessary for this particular thing. But it let me, it let it cut something, cut features that were too narrow for a pocket to work. Um, I'll use engraving bits to do the cutting, uh, 30 degree en engraving bits. And I tried a couple, I had some of just regular old engraving bits that had a real narrow, like a .01 flat on the bottom, that, that's just sort of what makes, that's the difference between an engraving bit and a V-bit, is a V-bit conceptually comes to a point, and an engraving bit has a flat on the bottom. So I ended up using, I got some .02 flats, and I tried a couple different ones, but the .02 seemed a good compromise between getting in to take places, but not having to take forever to, to clean out the passes in between. What I ended up settling on was an Amana um, insert bit engraving bit. So it's a holder that holds little inserts and you can get them in all different kinds of angles and flat depth and all that. So I just bought this kind of a neat little engraving bit. I love insert bits. I use them for V bits all the time. And um, so it this, this insert thing worked really well and I try, like I said, I tried a bunch of different flats and a couple of different angles, but the 30 degree .02 seemed to be just right to me, sort of a good compromise. Um, the rest of it's pretty straightforward. I tried two different versions. Uh, one was sort of, one was a negative of the other. So one had the design cut into the blank, and sort of I call it an any, and it just kind of, it's just carved in there. The most of the blank is just still the cylinder, just the outside of the blank. Um, then I reversed it, so most of the blank was removed and the design was raised above the surface, to the surface level. So you sort of pocket out everything except for the, your design. Um, the, the original one where it was incised in was, worked great for cookies. Also, using that same one that had sort of the Audi, the one that had the raised design, I coated a couple, I did a couple of them, and I coated them with um, that spray rubber, um, rubberized, I forget what Rust-Oleum calls it, but it's, a, it's sort of like plastic dip the um, stuff you put on plywood, uh, plier handles to give them a rubbery coating, they have a version of that. And I sprayed a couple of them with that, and, it, um, and then she could use it to roll out designs, like a, like a, block, like a repeating block printing design. And did a couple of them as, in just squares, as just regular block print stamps. Um, so they turned out neat, and she'll post some pictures of how the block printing work. I, that's sort of an experiment that I'm not confident I'm, that, I, that I've got anywhere close to being efficient. But it was kind of a, a, a different use for something um, above and beyond just getting a box of cookies. So it was an interesting project, um, and it's sort of, a, Working with designers is, is a different thing. You know, I'm sort of used to designing my own stuff or working with someone who's maybe got some fabrication skills. So this has been really kind of, kind of interesting to, to try to explain how this stuff, how, how this sort of fabrication world works to somebody who doesn't have, doesn't have a lot of experience in that. Just theoretical experience, but not hands-on experience. So we've got a couple other things coming up that will sort of help, help both of us figure out how to, how to communicate better in all kinds of projects. That's it.